So we're alive, man. Pizza, everything. Everything? Every blood clotting. Yo! Spread the word. Top shutters are back. Full effect. Chris Rich. Yeah, yeah. Niggas nowadays tryna pull up the plug. Yeah, yeah. Sweater right for you and everything they love. No room for daps or LOVEs, no room for hugs. Yeah, yeah. Like cheat and steal all in that order, all the above. Yeah, yeah. The man say try when they're right on top. Yeah, yeah. Coming for your things, coming for your spot, everything you got. Yeah, yeah. I put time in this thing, put growth in this thing, or you dizzy blood. Yeah, yeah. Think I'ma let you come through, talk my shit, huh? But you talk. Nigga, you ain't even on my radar. We don't even know who you are. Call yourself the connect, call yourself the plug. When on the real, you're just a wanker. Do you date like Pepsi, then Michael? Like Carl and Kira, this Shibo. Straight butters, man, you're always my nigga. How we do, people? You are tuned into Unity Extra, and today I'm here with someone who's not from this side of the planet, but they're definitely from the other side, they're from across the pond, and I'm so excited to have here today Lady Shakes in the building. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Well done, bro. I'm good. How you doing? How are things over on that side? Uh, stressful, but it's a bit hectic, isn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine? Man, I'm ready to be. What's the weather saying? Uh, the weather, it's, it's a bit on and off. So one day it'll be warm, next minute it'll be snowing. Then it'll be warm and snowing again, so it's on and off. We've had a bit of snow here too, and it's been our first bit of snow in quite a while, so it's actually nice to see the snow, but I'm not cold. I don't really like the cold weather, I prefer the sun, yeah. tropics and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Facts. I'm West Indian, so I gotta have tropics. I gotta have tropics. It's in my blood, you get me? I feel you. What part of West Indies are you from? Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. I'm always wanting to visit there. I'm yeah. from Guyana. Oh, Guyana. Oh, okay, okay. GT, I see you, I see you. GT, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I hear a lot of things about Guyana. I remember the TV show Desmond's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was a good TV show. Yes, Did yes. I'm sorry? Oh, man. This stuff. Oh, the connection. Oh, what happened? Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Maybe it was my fault. Sorry. Can you hear me out? Yeah, I hear you. They do. They do. They do. They do. I want to see I want to see what Gloria look like. I want to see how pork pie, if he still got that bald head, or if he still got the bald spot, or just all the hair is gone. I, I, I got to see pork pie. That was my favorite right there. <laughs> yeah, that is an absolutely amazing show. What state are you in, actually? I'm actually in Pennsylvania. Okay, my brother lives out there. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, we're talking to you today. I want to get to know you. Firstly, how is quarantine been? I know it's been a tough time for a lot of people, as you can see, I'm, I'm working from home. How has things been for you over the there? <clears throat> uh, quarantine, um, it's been difficult, but you know, life is what you make it. You know, you make the best out of it, or you can make the worst out of it. So, you know, quarantine has been more of, you know, getting in touch with myself as an artist. I know my inner self as an artist, as a human, you know, working out, you know, staying in touch with God, you know, praying, working on music, you know, that that's exactly what I've been doing, working more on music and just coming up with hot new stuff each and every day. No, that's good, that's good. Well, I'm going to assume, I might be wrong, but Lady Shakes was not the name you were born with. I'm going to assume that, is that fair to no, say? No, that, that's not the name I was born with. <laughs> so, where did the name come from? The name actually came from studying William Shakespeare in grade 12 in high school. And um, I developed a, a interest and love in some of his stories. You know, one thing I love about Shakespeare's stories is that it could be about anything and it can relate to what, like, it can hit you with something that you can, you relate to, you know, like, like Othello, that relates to portrayal. We all dealt with that. Romeo and Juliet that deals with love and it can also deal with two um, coming from two party people that come from two parties that don't get along but yet they get along and they mesh well those don't you know that's like you know Crips and Bloods you know there's certain things we relate to in life and you know you're telling the story so I love to tell stories you know based on what I've been through what I've done you know my mistakes how I look at my mistakes how I made it through my mistakes you know like to tell that into a story for people to understand me that's great, yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't really like English when I was in school. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even like William Shakespeare too much, but your music is something different. I like your music. I've had it. I listen to a few of your tracks, and I think it's absolutely amazing. And I feel like you have a British sound, which is quite quite unique. Oh and man! Also, people won't know that, that you have a British sound. Where did that come from, Howler? <laughs> <laughs> well, as a little child, as a little you, as a little you, um, um, growing up, well, my mom always took me back and forth to the um to the Bahamas once a year, so I can also see my family. So one time my mom actually sent me down. I was being a very naughty girl. So, you know, sometimes with West Indian kids, when we're naughty, we are being sent to the Caribbean to live. That's like our punishment. People think that's a vacation. No, that's rehab for us. So that's exactly what happened. I was I was out I was completely I was completely out of order. My mom sent me down to live with my granny and live with my aunties and being around them and being around my granny, you know. You know, I kind of picked up on the accent even more. Even as a little kid, yeah, but living in America, you know, being Americanized so much, I kind of lost the accent. So going back home, you know, living down there again for some short time, you know, I kind of picked up on the accent again. And they used to torture me. They used to make fun of me in my accent. But, you know, the older I get now, the more I use it, you know, <laughs> more, more things come to me. More, more, more bad things come to me, man. More pain things come to me. You get me? <laughs> okay, pain things up in, up in there. Okay, cool. <laughs> And also, you know, also as, as a youth growing up, I watched BBC television as well. And, um, you know, I remember watching S Club 7. I remember watching In the House with Cleopatra. Uh, man, uh, what else? Uh, Desmond's. What's another show I used to watch, man? Uh, I even used to watch Benny Hill. Just like, oh, and Tracy Beaker. That was my show right there. That was my show. Yes. You know, it's come back. Yes. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. I was like, wait, Tracy be all oh, Tracy grew up. Mother said, boy. Ooh, okay. <laughs> she is back. She got a kid. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Yo, they she grown. She has grown up, man. Oh my days. <laughs> Yo. I know it's crazy. You definitely have to check that out. For those listening, if you haven't checked out the new Tracy B, you need to check it out because I'm Facts. checking it out. I'm sure Lady Shax is checking it out too. Yo, that's for the old school heads. That's for the '90s kids, the '90s and '80s. Like they, the millennials don't know nothing about the Tracy B. I can, I, I guarantee you, bro. I guarantee you, when they listen to Stormzy's Superhero and they listen to that track, then they're like, "What is that?" I'm like, "Okay, if she does not understand or know that track, she is too young for you, bro. She is too young for you, man." <laughs> Uh, for real, for real. I'm 100% with you on that one. Facts. <laughs> well, describe well, um, your sound. Um, like, obviously, I know I said it's quite British, like, it has a British sound to it, but if you could describe your sound, what would you sort of describe your sound as? I would describe my sound as, you know, versatile, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and that's what I love about my project, um, Carpe DM, because it shows that I'm not, I'm not just doing one genre. I'm doing more than that. I'm doing. I did a trap song. I have done an Afro Caribbean song. I've done a club song. I've done like you know the introduction to um to Carpe Diem Genesis. It almost sounds like the introduction that Meek Mill d- uh, would have done for Dreams versus Nightmare. And the last song I've done um, on the end of the track of of um, the, the end of the project of Carpe Diem Woo is a drill song, and I've always loved drill. So. That was my first time ever channeling, channeling myself and channeling the accent that I grew up with and to using it in a way where people could understand me while I use the lingo. And, you know, it's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's a great mixture. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And you talked, you spoke about your EP, Carpe Diem. Yes. Tell people where they can get it. Tell people about it. We want to hear about it. Tell us about it. Carpe Diem, I would say that was like the name I always wanted for my project because basically in translation means, you know, seize the moment, basically live in the day, live in the moment, seize the day. And around that time when I was making it, I was really struggling really, really badly. You know, a label I was with, you know, didn't treat me right. I left them and I was struggling all on my own. So basically I did everything, an independent artist that didn't have reputation, did what they had to do. I... Yo, I work, double time, overtime, mandatory overtime, uh, Uber, Lyft driver, just making sure everything, you know, just so I had a roof over my head, food in my belly at night, and, and music, and bear pe- and bear peas for music, and, you know, recording. So, doing all of that, 
every time I recorded a song for the project, I lived in that moment. So, and it made it greater and bigger than what it is now. So to put it all together, to show the world what I've done, it's just beyond amazing. And I don't, I'm not trying to brag. I even cry sometimes when I listen to it because I remember there were certain times where I didn't eat when I was recording that song, you know? So, yeah, and it's like, it's on all music platforms, all go streaming everywhere, Spotify, Tidal, iTunes, iHeartRadio, everywhere, bro. That's good, that's good. Well, we're definitely going to get into a few tracks from it very, very soon. We're definitely going to get into a few tracks from it very, very shortly, so I'm super excited for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, how did your musical journey start? Because I know everyone has different journeys and musical journeys, so where was sort of maybe the point where you realised music is what I love and music is something I want to do? When was that point for you? I would have to say I was probably uh, at the age of three. My um. My dad from, is from Bahamas. He used to um, play for a marching band called the Valley Boys. And my father, and yeah, he's a musician, he's a drummer. My mom sometimes would play um, classical piano. And you know, from her, she'll play the classical music or African music or Caribbean music. My father, or Motown, my father was more like Caribbean, you know, dancehall, reggae, soca, calypso, hip hop, R and B, and some UK and UK hip hop as well. So you know, just growing up in that type of environment and that type of household where it's very multicultural, very diverse, that's where music started with me. Like I could just listen to any type of dip, uh, any type of song and just come up with a way and just dance to it, even if it looked like as if. It would look weird as if a black person would dance to this type of music or that type of music. It didn't matter. Like, whatever I felt, I just went in and I did it and at a young age. So, at the age of three, I knew that's what I wanted to do was always music, especially watching MTV with my older sister. And um, when I hit the age of 18, when I graduated high school, that's when I decided I wanted to do music full time. And I guess you haven't looked back since? No, I haven't. <laughs> That's good, that's good, that's good. And um, I guess, why did you first get into music? Was there maybe a person who inspired you um, initially to get into music? Or maybe who is your inspiration um, in the music industry? Oh man, there's a lot, I have a lot of music, I have a lot of inspirations, you know, from Michael Jackson to Chris Brown, oh man, to, uh, oh man, even James Brown as well, oh man, Craig David, definitely, Miss Dynamite. Um, Akala, Heavy One, Kano, um, man, even Wiley before Stormzy destroyed him. Um, yeah, uh, Storm Stormzy when he was Stormzy Omari, uh, Cadet R.I.P. I remember with Stormzy and Cadet with the um Clash of um, Clash of the Titans. I remember that. Uh, like old school hip, old school UK, old school um US hip hop, definitely Soul to Soul. My father played the hell out of that record, man. Especially that tune, oh man, man, back to life, my father played that non-stop, oh my days, bruv, yeah. just listening to those type of musicians, also V.B. Brown, you know, just different types of genre that made me want to come up with the sound that I always wanted to show people that I have, and I would say the one female MC from the UK that influenced me to really, really go in would have to be Miss Dynamite. And Lady Leisure. Nice. Can't forget Lady Leisure. Oh, of course, of course. She's, a, she's actually um, on the UK. Have you heard the Dance Nights? Yes, yes, yes. I watch it. On it right now. <laughs> I watch it. Yo, I will say this though. I remember Lady Leisure from when she did, like, I remember from 2009 when she, would, um, when she was just spit on the mic. And I remember from the film, I don't know if it's called Day One, One Day, One Day. One day, that movie, um, that film, One Day from, um, from Birmingham. That's why I remember Lady Leisure. That's why I remember Lady Leisure yeah. before the Queen's Speeches. Yes. Lady Leisure. Queen's Speeches, yes. yes. Before the D.I.V. Lady Leisure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a while back now, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a while back. Her and Lady Likes, bro, yo, oh my God. Throwback, throwback. <laughs> well, I feel like, you know what, I've got to be honest with you, the names that you've just said, many of them seem to be women. Mm -hmm. and that's the truth. I'm sorry, so many of them seem to be male. Mm -hmm. And I guess your lady shades and being in a male-dominated industry, 
it's not as easy as um, you know people might think. It's quite difficult. So maybe tell us about some of the struggles about being a woman in the industry that's actually male dominated. Oh man, it's it has its pros and cons. It has its perks. It's very uh, it can be very criticizing. Um, sometimes it can knock you down, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, if you know if you've been through it before, you can knock it down within an instant snap and just keep on going with it, you know, ain't nothing gonna stop you. So many years, I would ask people to give me a chance, you know, and nobody would do that. No one would even get take a, a split second just to listen to what I could do. But now, you know, since I'm elevating, I'm evolving, and it's getting, it's, you know, showing exactly what I can do, then now all of a sudden, now they take an interest. So I just find it very funny yeah. that they never took an interest before when I show how very hungry and dedicated I am. But yeah. other than that, um, hey, kick ass, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for real, that's great, that's great, that's great. Well, what's your creative process like? I know, um, you know, obviously we get an idea in our heads. Mm. Why don't you do? You get your idea in your head. <laughs> and how does it end up coming a song that everyone wants to listen to? Getting that type of idea, it's just like sometimes you can't force it. You know, it, it's there. It, it's there, but... You gotta let it flow. You gotta let, like, the way the universe works, you gotta let the universe work. Like, let it flow. Let it work in its flow and work in its nature. You have to do that with music as well. The mind is a very powerful thing, bruv. So, you know, you don't wanna say anything that could just, like, sound like, like chicken scratch and then put it out there and then boom, finish. No, and not putting in time and effort to make sure the quality of it sounds, sounds, sounds exclusive. You get me? So, I just take my time with it and, you know, Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great, that's great. <laughs> um, I guess you said, you know, you originally was, you were an independent artist. And what advice would you give to people who are probably up and coming and are independent artists themselves? Ownership is key. I will say that. Ownership is key. I will say I learned a lot about ownership, um, actually before his passing, um, Nipsey Hussle, from what he's done for the community in, in, um, in South Central Los Angeles. So, uh, and Compton. So, just to see what he's done and see how he owns his own business, his own masters, and how, like, honestly, from the grind, this man had literally fixed his broken computer. Like, literally bought the own pieces, fixed it his own self, and used that to produce his albums and print his albums. Like, if that's not the grind, if that doesn't say anything, bruv, man, I'd rather have ownership than to have anybody own me. You get me? Yeah. Ownership is key. And, and time and, and patience. Patience is key as well. Like, be patient. You can't rush anything overnight, man. And nothing's going to happen overnight. If you expect something to happen overnight, then obviously this isn't for you. Because this whole thing, yeah, is going to take, it's going to have a whole lot of ups, hopes, a whole lot of downs, you know, and it's either going to make you or break you, you know? So, it's either you, it's either. You shut up, you put up or you shut up, you know? You can't handle the kit, you can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen, you get me? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't handle the heat, heat get out the kitchen, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true, it's true. No, that's really good, that's really good. So, 2020 was a hard year for everyone. Um, you know, COVID 19, the pandemic, um, you know, a lot of you know, racial injustice um, mm. going on in, um, in the US and across the world. Yeah. Um, Black Lives Matter, the movement. There's been a lot of things going on. What would you, what would you say was your 2020 highlight? Um, and I'm going to ask, what was your personal highlight, but what was your highlight about everything going on around the world? I would say what my biggest highlight was was just. Getting songs done, getting songs out there, just releasing songs nonstop. Because even when we went under lockdown, I did not let the lockdown or quarantine stop me. Like, I literally instantly called my friend and asked him if he had his mobile studio ready and to bring it over to my house so we could record. So, I would have to say, completing Carpe DM and releasing it, that was my biggest moment for me for 2020. And as I said, there's a lot, um, there was a lot of racial injustice going on in the US. Um, how did it feel to be, uh, obviously I'm not in the US, I'm in the UK, things, there is racial injustice here, but I think it's very, very prevalent in um, the US. How was it like to be, you know, so close to all of that injustice going on? Um, what's it like for you? Oh man, how can I put it this way? I, um, 
a black West Indian woman living in an area where there is a lot of Trump supporters, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so I'm scared. I was scared. I'm not going to lie. I was scared to come out my house. Around that time when, um, you know, during an election, it was very scary because we did not know who could set, who could say something to set someone off. You know, that was, that, that was a very, that was like waiting at the edge of our seats for a results of a pregnancy test. Like, that's exactly what it felt like watching this whole election and just seeing certain people, you know, like that voted for certain people, certain other people where I felt like they didn't belong in the White House. Like, you see some of them, like, yelling at people of color, you know, just like, ah, just, it, it was just massive. It didn't even feel like home. It didn't feel safe. So honestly, I was really worried about my nieces and nephews who are mixed and who are also of color as well. So I like, you know, now you have to remind kids, you know, some people are gonna look at you because you are a certain way or you are a certain color or your tone is a certain way or you can't dress a certain way. You can't like, it's basically like you're telling the kids they can't be themselves. And I feel like that is totally, completely unfair. Like, you know, black is a beautiful thing. You know, had not been for black people, the world wouldn't even exist. We wouldn't, like, had not been for Africa, I'm gonna be real yet, yeah? because I'm, Ameri- I'm an African American that knows I'm my roots come from Africa first, you get me? So, had not been for Africa, we wouldn't have our oils, we wouldn't have our gold, we wouldn't have our diamonds, we wouldn't have our riches, our nutrients, we wouldn't have anything, you get me? Yeah. So, no. yeah, yeah. So, I'm, pr- I'm proud to be who I am. So if people here don't like it, hey, it is what it is. Cry about it. Cry about it to go up. <laughs> <laughs> if he answers I someone, I say, walk one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. You said, you know, obviously your EP carpet DM is out. And you said that there's a single on it called Moo. Could you explain to me what, what it's all about? What, what does the single Moo mean? What is it about? What's your inspiration behind that single? My inspiration behind that single is basically... Not um, no toler. I have no tolerance for for any BS or any rubbish. You get me. So there have been a lot of people that have been, you know, chatting, chatting all around, and chatty, chatty at the mouth. And you know, as a bigger person, I kept my distance. I kept my cool. You know, because as a West Indian, you know, I have um, no filter. So I was quick to tell. I'm, I'll be quick to tell you something in a, in a second when you're disrespectful. But I was very quiet, and let's just say some just kept poking the bear, and it's just like, okay, okay. the gloves is off. Um, 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 yeah. nah. So base. So honestly, I feel like woo. They basically said put some message out there like, look, don't mess with me. Like, I will out your, I will out your ish. Like, seriously, buff. Like, are you taking a piss, buff? Like, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, man. Yeah. yeah. I guess it was more of a whole up sort of song. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope you know. I'm. I'm gonna wish your EP a lot of success. Oh, thank um, you, bro. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you so much, man. Big ups to the UK, man. 079 London, Birmingham, Manchester, London. You get me? Bristol, you done know. Yeah, yeah. Croydon stand up. South Brixton stand up. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. Um, well, it's been a pleasure having here talking Billy Shakes all the way from the US of A. It's been a pleasure talking to her. You can catch the rest of this interview on Unity Extra, the Instagram page. Be sure to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. Any? Do you have anything else you want to say? Or are you good with that? Feel comfortable, everything good? I mean, like, no, shout out to Childhood Alumni, Childhood Alumni, my crew, you get me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, lovely. Um, I'll just get you to, um, to intro your song. Um, if you do it two times, mm-hmm. and, um, what I'll do is once um, everything's done, I'll make sure it's good. If there's any issues, I'll just probably like and drop you guys an email. Just ask you to record it again. That's potential, but to go and see it will probably be fine with you recording it here. Gotcha. But just in case you're on the safe side, I'd like to go on the safe side of things. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so, yeah, just um, introduce which song do you want us to play? Um, why don't you play Woo first? Woo, you want to play Woo? Okay, cool. So, yeah, intro, intro Woo then. Okay. Um, you can just be like, you know, 
Hey, it's Ed Shakes here. You're listening to Unity Extra. Here's my newest single, Woo. Okay. Do you think that's it? Gotcha. So whenever you're ready. All right. Yeah, yeah, you already know what it is. Your girl, Lady Shakespeare, here on Unity Extra. And you're right here listening to my new single, Woo. Check it out, you get me? Ciao, little night. You done now. Cool. Um, let's do that just one more time. One more time? And you guys. Yeah, yeah, you already know that it's your girl, Lady Shakespeare, right here on Unity Extra, and you're right here listening to my new single, Woo. Childhood alumni, you get me? Yeah, yeah. Lovely. I think that's it. I think we've got everything we need. I'm happy with everything. I'm Booyah. sure you're, you're good with everything as well. I'm cool with it. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much for that. Yo, appreciate thank you, that. bro. I can't wait to get that out. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. You know what, technology is great. It allows us to do this. I'm not in the US, but it's like I'm in the US. You know what right. I mean? And it's like I'm in the UK. I'm not even over there. It's like I'm over there. You get me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Okay. So, um, I don't have details for you. Is anyone there that can jot down my email address? Yes, yes, yes. Just so I can. One second. One second. One second. Uh, one second. She's going to um, get a paper right now. Okay. UK baby. Yeah, let me just. There's nothing more.